how international trade involves multiple parties from different countries with different rules and regulations. This leads to increased risks and uncertainties in the business. Sometimes it may also happen that the parties do not meet each other physically due to the long distances and therefore trust becomes a major concern in such situations. To address these concerns and in order to bring uniformity and standard in the business processes, we have certain global organizations who provide a framework for conducting business and set standards for processes to be adapted globally. Through this, they enhance the trust amongst the trading member nations and also reduce the risks and uncertainties associated with the business. For example, we have the World Trade Organization overseeing the international trade agreements, the International Maritime Organization setting standards and processes for the shipping fraternity and so on. Let us understand the roles and responsibilities of such organizations in international trade in some detail. We have seen in our previous class that countries enter into agreements called as trade agreements in order to mutually benefit from business and to resolve any disputes that may arise while doing this business transaction. These agreements are monitored by a global organization called as the World Trade Organization. The primary purpose of World Trade Organization is to open trade for the benefit of all. This is a forum where the governments negotiate trade agreements. The goal of WTO is to help producers of goods and services, exporters and importers to conduct business smoothly. Also, World Trade Organization helps to enhance the trade relationships amongst the countries by lowering trade barriers through negotiations. Another key responsibility of World Trade Organization is to resolve disputes which may arise among the countries during business transactions. Let us also see a couple of other key responsibilities of World Trade Organization. WTO agreements are the legal foundations for global trade. Essentially, they are contracts guaranteeing WTO members of important trade rights. The organization supports with settling disputes and resolution process among member countries. Dispute settlement is regarded as the central pillar of the multilateral trading system and aimed towards the stability of global economy. The priority of WTO is to settle disputes through a mutually agreed solution and in an efficient and timely manner. WTO supports countries by negotiating trade barriers and liberalized trade. WTO was established in the year 1995 and currently has 164 member countries. It is a successor to GATT, the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, which was established in 1947 with 23 member countries overseeing international trade. It is headquartered in Geneva, Switzerland. The next organization that we are going to see is the International Monetary Fund. The key role of IMF is to facilitate balanced growth of international trade, to promote exchange rate stability and to monitor the balance of payment. Balance of payment is a statement of all the monetary transactions that a country has with the rest of the world in a specified period of time. It is basically the difference between all the money that is flowing into the country and the money that is flowing out of the country in a specific period of time. This transaction involves individuals, corporates and government. It monitors the flow of fund to develop the economy of a country. Since the balance of trade is an important component of balance of payments, the involvement of IMF in international trade is justified. Let us now look at some key aspects of IMF. IMF is an organization which aims to ensure the stability of the international monetary system. The system of exchange rates and international payments that enable countries to transact with each other. A sound international financial system is needed to support the free flow of trade and to reduce the risks of payment imbalances and financial crisis. IMF is responsible for overseeing the BOP of member countries and provide assistance by funding money to countries with BOP difficulties. It aims to foster global monetary cooperation and secure financial stability. 
IMF was established in the year 1945 and currently has 189 member states. It is headquartered in Washington DC, USA. Moving on, the next organization that we are going to see is the International Chamber of Commerce. The International Chamber of Commerce is the world's business organization comprising of about 45 million companies in over 100 countries. The ICC is known as the world's largest association of companies. ICC helps to set standards and guidelines to be adapted by businesses irrespective of how big or small they are. Its aim is to create a level playing field for the companies involved in trade. ICC also publishes rules and regulations that can be adapted by the companies and incorporated into their binding contracts. To mitigate the complexity of trade of different rules in different countries, ICC published the first international commercial terms, also known as the INCO terms. INCO terms primarily define the roles and responsibilities of buyers and sellers in an international trade transaction. The rules clarify the tasks, costs and risks to be borne by the buyer or the seller in the international trade. Let us now look at some other key aspects of ICC. The International Chamber of Commerce promotes trade and investments, open markets for goods and services and free flow of capital. ICC developed trade finance standards to help small businesses move into foreign markets and also created rules for documentary credit. In 1923, ICC published its first work on international trade terms and the first edition of INCO terms was published in 1936. INCO terms are a series of predefined trade terms which clearly communicate the task, cost and risk associated with international transportation and delivery of goods. INCO terms rules are accepted by governments, legal authorities and practitioners worldwide in international trade. ICC was founded in the year 1919 in Paris, France. As we all know, in global trade, a product is physically leaving the territory of one country and entering the territory of the other. These international territories are monitored by government authorities called as customs, whose main responsibility is to protect the country from threats and illegal trade practices. The World Customs Organization is the global organization which is overseeing the customs community around the world and helping them to work efficiently and effectively in a coordinated manner. The World Customs Organization believes that borders divide but customs connect the world trade. World Customs Organization is known for their work in many areas such as commodity classification, valuation, supply chain security, etc. It is constantly involved in developing, promoting and implementing modern customs, systems and procedures around the world to enable a smooth flow of trade. Let us now look at some key aspects of World Customs Organization. World Customs Organization is an intergovernmental organization of customs authorities dedicated to the continuous improvement of customs procedures worldwide. WCO's purpose is to strengthen ties between customs administrations and their partners so as to create a customs environment that is strong and efficient. WCO implemented the HS code that is the harmonized system of nomenclature in the year 1988 as a set of nomenclature regarding product classification that could be used by all trading nations. The HS codes provide legal and logical structure along with uniform identity to commodity classification used in more than 200 countries as a basis for customs tariffs. It comprises about 5000 commodity groups organized logically by economic activity or component material. Example, machinery and mechanical appliances are found in one section of the HS code while vegetable products are found in the other. WCO was established in the year 1952 and currently has 183 customs administration. It is headquartered in Brussels, Belgium. One of the important factors that has made international trade possible are the shipping lines who physically transport the cargo from one country to the other.
Without a mode of transportation, international trade is not possible. Shipping has been thriving as an industry over the years as it transports almost 90% of world's cargo. As a result, any ship has a management chain that spans across multiple countries. Also, as ships spend more time at sea under various jurisdictions, a need for a global organization to formulate regulations and policies was felt. Thus, the International Maritime Organization came into being. The IMO's roles and responsibilities include formulating regulations and policies for the shipping industry and its various activities such as maritime security, safety, legal aspects, technical aspects, environmental concerns, etc. Let us now look at the key aspects of International Maritime Organization. As a specialized agency of the United Nations, IMO is the global standard setting authority for the safety, security and environmental performance of international shipping. Its main role is to create a regulatory framework for the shipping industry that is fair and effective, universally adopted and implemented. It oversees every aspect of worldwide shipping regulation including legal issues and shipping efficiency. IMO develops international conventions to regulate safety of transportation by sea and to control pollution at sea. Some major conventions include SOLAS which is safety of life at sea and MARPOL which is marine pollution. One of the recent rules included by IMO under SOLAS is the document named VGM verified gross mass which is mandatory for all the shipments to be carried by sea. Verified gross mass is the combined weight of the container tear weight and weight of all the cargo including packaging and dunnage. SOLAS requires shipper to provide VGM before vessel loading. The purpose of VGM is to obtain an accurate gross weight of the packed contained so to protect the vessel, terminals and terminal operators transporters, port assets and cargo from any major accidents resulting from container overweight. Carriers are instructed to not load the containers into the vessels without VGM and here it has become mandatory for all shippers to provide VGM for any shipment by sea. IMO was established in the year 1948 and currently has 174 member states. It is headquartered in London, United Kingdom. Another important mode of transportation used in international trade is air. Air offers faster transit times and thereby enabling the shippers to achieve faster supply chains. Also, air provides connectivity to places and countries where sea mode is not an option and thereby bringing in more global markets for international trade. The tight connection between global economy and aviation industry has led to the International Air Transport Association becoming an integral part of international trade. The IATA is the trade association of world's airlines who come together in order to perform the trade activities. IATA oversees the aviation activities addresses issues related to the aviation industry and works towards simplifying the business processes. The focus of IATA is to provide safety to the people and cargo that are handled through air transportation, address environmental concerns and provide simplified business processes. IATA also publishes the TACT, providing all the information related to transportation of cargo by air worldwide. For over 40 years, TACT has been used as the ultimate reference and guide for operational and compliance information for handling air cargo. IATA also provides net rates, which is a platform providing all rates and bookings between airlines, GSAs and the forwarders. It is mandatory for an agent to be registered with IATA in order to process an air shipment. Now let us have a look at the different aspects of IATA. IATA is a trade association of world airlines supporting in formulating industry policies and standards. IATA strives to ensure that people, freight and mail move around the world easily and that the members aircraft operate safely, securely, efficiently and economically under clearly defined rules.
Under IATA, airlines work together to standardize and improve services. IATA publishes the air cargo tariff and rules which is the ultimate guide for operational and compliance information for air cargo. It also provides a rate distribution platform called the IATA net rates for all rates and bookings between airlines, GSAs and forwarders. IATA plays a vital role to study problems concerned with airline industry and air transport services. IATA was established in the year 1945 and currently has around 290 airlines as its members. It is headquartered in Montreal, Canada. The next organization that we are going to see is FIATA, International Federation of Freight Forwarders Association. FIATA is a global organization comprising many forwarding companies around the world as its members. Freight forwarders are agents who perform the shipment activities on behalf of a manufacturer by contracting with carriers and other related parties. FIATA focuses on creation of documents and forms to establish a standard of forwarding around the globe. Let us now look at some key roles and responsibilities of FIATA. FIATA is a non-governmental organization representing the forwarding and logistics companies around the globe. FIATA aims to improve the quality of services rendered by freight forwarders by developing and promoting uniform documents and standard trade practicing conditions. It represents, promotes and protects the interests of the industry by acting as advisors to forwarding and logistics companies. FIATA was established in the year 1926 and has almost 40,000 forwarding and logistics companies as its member. It creates documents such as the FIATA FCR, FIATA BL to maintain uniformity in trade. It is headquartered in Gladberg, Switzerland. The other important organization in international trade are the financial institutions. Financial institutions form the backbone of trade between the exporters and the importers. They not only provide liquidity but also guarantee payment on behalf of the importer. Financial institutions issue financial instruments which support the exporters and thereby grow the global trade. Let us now look at certain roles and responsibilities of financial institutions. Banks play a critical role in international trade by providing trade finance products that reduce the risk of exporting. Export activities involve expenditures, variable costs in the form of duties, taxes, freight insurances and shipping which require exporter to be financially sound. In order to support exporters, governments and financial institutions have created different financial instruments providing trade finance. These instruments are used and tailored to satisfy the needs of the exporter, such as documentary collection, letter of credit, open account, forfeiting, etc. are examples of such financial instruments. Up to 90% of world trade relies on financial instruments making the role of financial institutions in international trade significantly important. With this, we conclude our topic about parties and organizations involved in global trade.